We have the saying, do we not, that talk is cheap. Talk very often can just be empty words and empty promises. Real faith isn't just talk. It's putting into action that which we say, that which we believe. And so when Imam Hussein responds in faith to the call of God, he responds not just with words, but with total commitment, with total action. When he leaves Mecca and goes out into the desert, he takes everything with him. Everything, of course, is his entire family, his children, his entire posterity, those who will succeed him, those who are to be the next generation in the Ahl al-Bayt. Everything is staked in faith upon trusting God. And in this way, we see that total commitment, that commitment which requires everything. Now, the first time that we go into a strange country or a strange situation, everything is new and different because we really don't know what to expect. But after some time away, when we go back again, then we know what awaits us. That's when it takes real courage, because then we know what we're going into. Now, Imam Hussein knows what he's going into, because he's already had that insight, that vision, at the tomb of the Prophet in Medina, he knows that he is called to martyrdom. He knows that his children will either die with him or they will be taken into captivity. And therefore, he knows what awaits him. He goes forward into the desert with eyes wide open. There is no doubt, there is no question in his mind. When we think in this way of total commitment, we think of that story which is also repeated both in Bible and in Quran, the story of the sacrifice of Abraham. When Abraham needs to commit himself totally in trust to God. If we just think about that story for a moment, Abraham has waited so long for a son. The son is to be his posterity. It is to be the future of his family, of his inheritance. And yet he is called by God to sacrifice his son. And what's more, the Quran tells us that he is told by God to tell his son Ismail this is what God requires. Now, Ismail, of course, is also a prophet of God. Therefore, his life is lived in total submission, in total surrender to God. I am not the author of my life, he says. God is the author of my life. Who am I to tell God when I should die? And so we see the two of them going forward into the desert, going forward to the place where the sacrifice is to be performed. Both of them with eyes wide open in total faith and trust in God. We know that they submit themselves totally in prayer, in prostration before God. And then as Ibrahim rises and is about to perform the act, he is stopped by the voice of the angel. You are not to go through with this sacrifice. Instead, you are to sacrifice the ram. But the commitment was total into the hands of God. And in the same way, we see that Imam Hussein makes total commitment, total faith 
expressed in words, expressed in actions, expressed in the totality of his life, committed into the service of God, that he goes forward with his posterity. What kind of a request can this be from God? That not only is his life sacrificed, but also the life of his children who will either die as martyrs or who will be taken into captivity. Such an enormous price that must be paid. Why could it be? What could demand such a price? We know that when someone is really ill with cancer, the only hope to try to save their life is to give them this most severe of treatment, the chemotherapy, which totally challenges their whole life. We're trying to poison the cells within them as much as possible while leaving their body whole and entire so that they can come through this treatment. Only such a treatment, only such an illness could require such a severe treatment. And yet the treatment here is the death of Imam Hussein, the death of some of his children, and also the others taken into captivity. What then is the illness that requires such a severe treatment? This is not a mere power struggle between one group of people and another. This is not who should be the rightful caliph. This is not some trivial matter. What is at stake here is the fundamental direction of the way of God, the path of God that has been laid out by the Quran and by the Prophet Muhammad. Because we are on the verge here of seeing a distortion of that fundamental teaching and way of God which will lead away from the direction in which it will lead to paradise and it will lead off somewhere else. Not just one generation, but future generations too. So Imam Hussein is called here to put down a marker with such strength and with such clarity that it will be a marker to the truth, to the way of life required by God into the future for all generations. Islam is at stake, the way of God is at stake, the path that leads through this life to human flourishing and also to paradise. This is what's at stake. And therefore, this awesome price must be paid. The death of the Imam, the death of some of his children, and other members of his family taken off into captivity. We know that on the day of Ashura itself, in the battle at Karbala, 17 members of the family will be killed. This is a tremendous price, and it is a price that is necessary to be paid in order to correct this deviation from the true path, which is about to happen. Just in the same way that we saw that Ibrahim, Abraham, and Ismail, Ishmael, were prepared to make that total sacrifice. In the same way, Imam Hussein is prepared to make that total sacrifice. However, it's crucial here to notice, this is not of their design. They are not saying, 
this is what I choose to do. This is the call from God. This is the will of God, and they choose to submit to that divine will. So martyrdom is obedience to the will of God to the ultimate degree. It is not something that we design for ourselves, but it is a total submission to the divine will. It can only be an act of total faith, of total commitment. So it is the culmination of an act of faith which begins with profession of the lips, continues through profession of the body, through following a certain pathway through life, and ultimately the commitment in death. One would hardly submit one's life in martyrdom if there was not a firm and profound belief in that which was to come hereafter, the life after death. So we see this faith of Imam Hussein not just being expressed in life and in death, but also carrying on into a commitment, God will not forsake me. God will vindicate me. God will call me into that divine embrace that we call paradise, that the people of paradise shall live near to God, in the presence of God. And that shall be a life of pure bliss because of that closeness to God, that infinite attraction to go ever deeper into divine wisdom, into love, into closeness to God. This is the goal for which Imam Hussein is finally prepared to devote his life. He is sacrificing his life for the message of Islam. He is sacrificing his life for taking people toward the goal of the life hereafter, but he is also establishing in the clearest way possible, marking out the very pathway toward paradise, which is his responsibility as the Imam, as the living member of the Ahl al-Bayt at this time. So to understand the whole story of Karbala, we need to see it in this whole gesture of profound faith in action. We're constantly reminded of that hadith of the two most precious things, the Quran and the Ahl al-Bayt. Never shall they separate until they reach me in paradise. Now, that demand of the Ahl al-Bayt is an ongoing process. The Quran has come, it is there, but it requires in each generation the commitment of the Ahl al-Bayt to keep on that firm and straight path. And if we think of the two rails of a railway track. They must not diverge by one millimeter. If they move off by one millimeter, then it becomes a centimeter, then eventually it becomes a meter, and long before that, the whole track is lost, the way to paradise is lost, the train, as it were, cannot move. So the commitment is total and is ongoing. The Quran is there, but it is the duty of the Ahl al-Bayt in each generation until the end of time to keep that rail dead straight and leading to paradise. <laughs>